Let's turn to your bulletins. The page two, inner page, call to worship. And if you're able, please rise. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Celebrate God in this sacred space. Celebrate God in all places under heaven. Give praise for God's resurrection power. That everything with life and breath praise God. Let us open ourselves to God in confession, trusting the Lord's desire to give us peace. God of the empty tomb and our empty hearts, when we are afraid to speak our faith in the world, forgive us and help us to find our voice. When we are afraid to forgive and to love again, forgive us and give us our power to forgive. When we are confined by our hurts, touch us with your wounded hands and set us free. When we are locked behind our doubts and fears, pass through our barricades, open our hearts, and give us peace. Amen. Christ comes with healing light into our locked places and shadowy hearts, resurrecting our spirits and breathing into us new life. As God's own forgiven people, go to bring peace, forgiveness, and new life to the world, in the name of Jesus Christ, resurrected from the dead. Amen. Amen. Now please turn to the hymnals, for our hymnals, number, page 175, page 175. After the resurrection of Jesus, his friends began to spread the good news. Provoked by all this, the chief priest and those on his side went into action, arrested the apostles and put them in the town jail. Some time later, they stood before the high council. The chief priest said, 
Didn't we give you strict orders not to teach in Jesus' name? And here you have filled Jer Jerusalem with your teaching and are trying your best to blame us for the death of this man. Peter and the apostles answered, It's necessary to obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, the one you killed by hanging him on the cross. God set him on high at his side, Prince and Savior, to give Israel the gift of a changed life and sin forgiveness. And we are witnesses to these things, the Holy Spirit, whom give God gives to those who obey him, confirms every detail. John chapter 20. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear for the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, and as the Father has sent me, so I send you. So the other disciples told Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, who was not with them when Jesus came, He is risen. And Thomas said, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Here ends the reading. Word of love and life, word of God. Praise to you, O Christ. So let us sing 365, 1 and 2. 365, 1 and 2 and please be seated.
And now that Easter Sunday has come and gone. So, back to reality again. It is just this encounter with reality in today's Gospel that uh, we are asked to think about. It is about Thomas. And Thomas is known as the doubter. But I think this lesson is not about doubt. I think this lesson is about the reality we live and about the courage to ask questions about the reality we experience. I think Thomas is like some of you perhaps, or like me, or like the Kaufmans who asked difficult questions yesterday. They want to know. Thomas wanted to know. I want to know. So what happened? The friends of Jesus are hiding behind locked doors. And who can blame them? They had just witnessed the one they believed to be the Savior, betrayed by one of his own, tried and convicted by both religious and civil authorities, and then brutally executed. Of course they were afraid, assuming that the next step would be to round up Jesus' followers and to put them into jail as it happened to Jesus' followers later, as we heard Tyler reading. But then, when Jesus came and stood before them, saying, Peace be with you, their fear falls away and is replaced by joy. Is this the way we assume faith should work? Yes, perhaps you have got doubts and questions and fears, but then God arrives and those Doubts and questions and fear all fall away, replaced by joy and wonder and, of course, unshakable faith. That's not the way it worked with Thomas and probably not with many of us. Thomas doubts. He questions. He disbelieves. He is not satisfied with second-hand reports and wants to see for himself. And again, who could blame him? He was, after all, one of those who saw his Lord and friend mistreated, beaten, betrayed, crucified. And probably after this experience, he has probably spent the last few days pulling the broken pieces of his own life together and trying to figure out what to do next. It is, for example, it is as if a ca cancer patient finally reconciled to his or her fate, is told of a new miracle cure. Or a discouraged spouse who has finally accepted that her marriage is over, is told that her husband is really a new man. I think nothing is worse than getting cut again by one's broken dreams. And Thomas has bled enough. No more. So he demands proof. Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and place my finger in the mark of the nails and place my, my hand in his side, I will not believe. Some days ago, I, I, um, in one of the newspapers, I have read the story of Sophia. And I would like to, to tell you her story. Sophia lived, lives, in Kiev, in the Ukraine. And uh, three days and three nights, she was hidden there together with her two kids because her own house had been destroyed by bombs. And they just really, just hardly were, uh, were able to escape through the garden door. And they found a, a house close to them, already destroyed, but still, was able to give them some protection. So um, in the day they were hiding there because they were afraid of other attacks and of course of the Rus Russian soldiers. But in the night they tried to get out and to find some water, some friends and something to eat. So, um, the soldiers were still close and uh, all of, you could hear the shots and the, um, the gunfires again and again and again and you could see the fire still and if you have seen it 
on TV, you know what I'm talking about. Sofia has planned to go to Poland where she has some relatives living, but uh, she didn't know where her husband was, the father of her children. He, was, he became a member of the Ukraine army, but uh, what had happened to him, they didn't know. And it was difficult for them just to, uh, to go to Poland, to another country, because they didn't know what happened to husband and father. So the evening before they really started to leave uh, Kiev and the Ukraine, they just wanted to get out again and to get some food and water, the door opened or the rest of the door that was still functioning was opened by somebody they didn't know. And of course they were afraid. Who was it? Somebody who was seeking shelter as they did? Somebody who was stealing perhaps? Or a, a Russian soldier? It was Sofia's husband. He got some days off in order to find his family his wife and his children, but she didn't recognize him. She didn't recognize him because there was no light in the house and this person was so dirty and smelling. There was still the smell of fire and of course and sweat and blood. And his voice was not, she didn't recognize his voice anymore because it was hoarse and very, and very, very, very mellow. And he said, it's me, it's me, believe me. But she didn't believe him until she touched his left arm and went with her finger along to his shoulder where she knew would be a scarf. She knew about this because there was a wound once and this wound healed, but there was still something touchable. So she felt this and she said, oh, it's him. Finally, I recognize him. And she wrote down, I'm thankful for his hurting, for his scarf, because it helped me to recognize him again. So I thought about this story I have read some days ago, and I was thinking about Thomas and Jesus, because Jesus needed to touch Jesus. He needed to see his wounds, and Jesus invites him to. I think, though most likely filled with fear and anger and shame that comes from knowing that he not only doubted but also deserted his friend, when Thomas was confronted by his Lord, when he's greeted by forgiveness and, and peace, and when he is allowed to touch Jesus and really to feel what had happened to him, he believes and he makes a great confession, my Lord and my God. In a heartbeat, Thomas knows that he will never be the same again. And when Jesus said, peace be with you, I think he, was, he is confronted with a whole new reality. The one who died and was betrayed by his friends, the one who, who was resurrected, and the one who has shown himself to the other people, and the one who allowed them to doubt him, really to doubt him, this one is standing before them, my Lord and my God. I think sometimes faith is like that. You have something happen in your life and you're a believer. But sometimes faith needs the freedom of questions and the freedom of doubt to really grow. Peace be with you. Christ says this to the frightened Thomas, and peace comes in so many forms. When, for example, we wish each other the peace of Christ, it is the same peace that the risen Christ promised his friends, peace be with you. And you know, peace comes in so many forms. For example, in an unexpected apology of a friend or a colleague, in the undeserved forgiveness of somebody you thought would not like you, or would had hurt you, in the all too often unnoticed tenderness of a spouse or a friend, or in different forms and ways like yesterday, for example with a confidence, 
when we were sitting here in front of the altar and were praying and uh, some compliment said um, <laughs> the last time I was at church she said was was Good Friday and it, I felt so calm and so comforted and so well and I looked at her and, say, and said you don't have to tell me this because I'm your pastor but she said um, no I tell you because it's true I felt comforted and well and this was said by a 14 year old girl and this was great to hear so peace peace I felt when I listened to her I think peace comes in different forms and in different possibilities and we we are told as the father sends me so I send you God tells you I send you so we are sent in our confusing, hurting and ambiguous world. But we are sent with something new. We are sent with a promise that God in Jesus already had transformed this confusing and hurting world. So that nothing, no work, not school, not our relationships, not even life or death will ever be the same again. Because he is risen and because we are risen with him. We are an Easter church. We are Easter church. This is what Easter means, that we are forever transformed people. It's not just a celebration, Easter Sunday. It's a way of life. Easter does not just is celebrated one Sunday a year. Easter is a way of life because Christ is with us forever. And we are Easter Church. So as the Father has sent him, we are sent out to live. That we are, and to show and to witness this Easter Church. May God help us. Amen. And the peace of God, which will surpass our human understanding, keep our minds and hearts in Christ Jesus. Amen. creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. I know that you are still afraid of uh, shaking hands, but I would like to invite you just to turn around and to uh, wave. Greet each other. And remember that these words, peace be with you, was said by the risen Christ to his disciples after the resurrection. Peace be with you. Let us continue with the prayers of intercession and I will uh, conclude, God, as you sent Christ, please answer now, send us. Holy God, you have made us and redeemed us through Christ to be your peace, serving you and your dominion forever and ever. Help us, though we are wounded, but help us to bring your peace in the world, because as you sent Christ, now send us. We pray for the church around the world in all its local expressions, serving not ourselves, but your love and your forgiveness and your glory, because as you sent Christ, now send us. We pray for those who cannot see you and yet desire to believe. Help us and help them to see you in, in the faces of Christian people, to see you when they enter this church, to see you when they meet us in the streets, because as you sent Christ, now send us. We pray for those who need healing, and hope, who cannot see the possibility of new life. We pray for those who are in the Ukraine right now, for those who are in the Middle, in the middle East, for those who are in Africa. We pray for those who are hurting, suffering from violence, suffering from war. And sometimes, God, we are not able, we are not able to help, and we feel this helplessness. So give us the tools to help through prayer by not forgetting pain, by not closing our eyes, but by praying and being aware of what's happening around the world. Because as you sent Christ, now send us. We pray for those in our world who are wounded and suffer from war and oppression and disease. We pray for those in our congregation who are waiting for healing. And we mention before you Tobias and his family, Stefan and his family, Marga and her daughter. And either silently or aloud, we lift up others. As you, God, sent Christ, now send us. God who is and who was and who is to be, be for us the beginning and the end. And grant that we might give your forgiveness, your peace, and your resurrecting, resurrecting good news. And everything else which lingers in our hearts and in our minds, we place into your hands, God, as we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So go with God's peace into the peace of Easter. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his face and give you his peace. In the name of God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Three, six, seven, one and two. Three, six, seven, one and two. And please be seated. Thank you. 